Hi, so a, a little video to uh, to maybe explain a little bit better the difference between primary, secondary uh, and tertiary structures uh, of proteins and also maybe uh, highlight some of the um, of the difficult concepts uh, uh, around those different structures. So if we look at the um, primary structure of a protein, we can see that we start from uh, the N residue here uh, and we go from C, C, O, N, C, C, O, etc. all the way to the C, O, O minus uh, of the of the carbonyl, resi uh, carbonyl end, so the carbonyl end here and the um, N terminal here. And those little uh, forms here are, are basically to highlight the fact that all the different residues are, are would be different. So you, you have different uh, amino acids uh, going along the chain. Uh, but already from that we can see that we have uh, a hydrogen here, a hydrogen on, on each of the amine groups, and, and a carbonyl with two um, lone pair of electrons on, on each um, oxygen which could potentially form hydrogen bonds so those highly uh, hyd um, polar structure uh, with uh, alternating uh, residues going uh, along the chain now de facto the secondary structure now is is uh, for example here the uh, alpha helix but it will work uh, the same way really with, with the beta sheet, is, um, is, is a coiling of that primary structure uh, along a, a, an axis uh, in a helical form. And uh, you can notice that all the residues, so let's put them maybe uh, in, in red, in, in green, because they are in green, all the residues are outside of the of the structure they're going they're pointing out of the structure uh, out of the helix so towards you or at the back of it there um, as it were and that structure there is is just like a, a, a little bit like a, a porcupine a little bit with all those those little sticky ends uh, of the um, of the residues uh, sticking out on the outside of the structure the whole thing, though, uh, is stabilized with hydrogen bonds between the hydrogen uh, on the amine to a carbonyl group, the CO, the oxygen there, um, on another amino acid around three and a half or four amino acids away. And you can see that all those, I mean, those hydrogen bonds that are here in red, that I highlight in yellow, throughout the structure, are more or less uh, parallel. They extend a bit further, even, uh, and and they're they're all parallel, going more or less with the axis of the alpha of the uh, alpha helix. And so, if you were to stretch that helix, uh, it would stretch without breaking, and then it would come back. And that will effectively confer some elasticity to uh, the helix. And then the next point, the last point, is, is the tertiary structure, where effectively in the tertiary structure, those helices then would start to fold uh, on top of one another, and combine basically into a quite compact structure that would form the eventual um, final structure, final 3D structure of the protein. Now, it's all very nice and clean to speak about primary, secondary, tertiary structures, but uh, I, I'd like to show you what it really looks like on a protein itself. So, uh, sorry, I have the example of, of beta-lactoglobulin, which is uh, one primary uh, protein uh, in bovine milk um, and in the whey parts. Not a, it's not a casein. You don't find it in cheese. It's it's the protein that is left uh, in the, um, out of the curd when during cheese manufacturing. So it's it's one of the whey proteins. 
and uh, beta lactoglobulin is is a globulin and we are going to have a look at it now uh, sorry it's it's a it's a globulin with a, a, a very compact structure, so this is this is a 3D representation of uh, of that protein. I I, uh, I spin it a bit there just to show you that whichever way you look at it, whichever direction you look at it, it's a fairly spherical protein, hence the name of globule, uh, globulin. And uh, if you were to look at it that way, you'd be very hard pushed to uh, find any secondary or tertiary structure in the whole of that. Uh, to really look, uh, we can we can display uh, the atoms a, a little bit thinner, so maybe with uh, balls and sticks instead of uh, full on. And even there, it would be very very difficult to see any sort of beta sheets or alpha helices going on uh, in that structure in that final um, 3D structure. I need to show um, really either in a strand, sorry, or in a way a cartoon way. And, and now, now we can see the secondary structure of the protein with emerging here some parallel strands that are drawn as flat arrows that would be here a, a large beta sheet um, there's there's a, a, another one going here with one two three and four um, segments parallel or anti-parallel we'll have a look at them and then there's also a helix there somewhere here we go there's a large helical secondary structure here uh, a little bit on the on the outside of the uh, of the protein by the way and um, that then is preceded by uh, one section uh, of of a beta lac of a beta sorry of a beta sheet and uh, it is followed uh, via a small little segment of disordered conformation uh, to also a, another a beta uh, section for a, a beta sheet. So if we if we start maybe from one end of the molecule to and we follow it through to uh, to the other end, we can see that the, the molecule starts here at uh, the N terminal uh, in blue. And it starts by quite a, a, a large uh, segment of, of disordered uh, structure. Not really any alpha helix or, or, or beta sheet here. Um, only one small little alpha helical structure that we can just nearly, nearly a full turn. And then followed by a small section of a flat beta sheet. Uh, and then another segment of of beta uh, beta sheet structure uh, again interrupted by a, a little alpha helix segment and all those little segments going from maybe three four amino acids uh, for the sh shortest to here is a long uh, maybe a nine or ten amino acid segment uh, included in the in the beta sheet, and all the fo they're followed and preceded by some disordered structure. Um, but if you followed the, um, the 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 sequence from the blue end all the way down, you'll end up at the very far red end, the C terminal. So the overall uh, composition of that protein is just one peptide strand. There's just one peptide, one primary sequence overall, uh, but that primary sequence is um, first arranged into uh, different proportions of either disordered segments followed by uh, alpha helices and preceded and followed by disordered segments again and then uh, alpha helices or, 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 or beta sheets. Uh, we can have a look here, for example, uh, it's, a nice, it's a nice little beta uh, sheet there going on in the green all the way to the blue and the red. So it's a very large beta sheet. If you see, you've got one, two, three, four, 
five hiding behind the, the helix there in blue and six segments. Um, some of them are contiguous so that they are going from um, preceding uh, and, and following each other. For example, those three, uh, four uh, green uh, turning yellow ones here, they are going anti-parallel with a um, hair loop between each another hair loop and then so they're all anti-parallel you can see the arrow going up and then the arrow going down and then we've got an alpha helix which disturbs the, the whole uh, thing again and then you've got uh, finally and uh, the, the last uh, segment of the beta sheet but uh, in the middle you've got a, a, another segment that um, the, the sorry that precedes um, overall in the in the um, in the primary structure, but yet it intercalates itself in in between two segments that are further on in the primary structure. So it's it's quite a complicated system. It's not just um, uh, hair loops going uh, back and forth. Uh, it's it's um, it's more complicated than that. But really, you'd need to have the full structure and and this this beautiful rendition here in in 3d uh, to to appreciate and to really understand that you've got a primary followed by a secondary tertiary uh, structure to give you finally the, the the overall 3d uh 3d structure of the of the protein if you were to um just normal uh, have a look at the um at the at, at the protein you wouldn't be able to uh, really and understand any of that you you need the you need the x-ray and and you need the um the the 3d imagery to actually show it properly for you all right uh, i i hope it's been helpful and uh, thank you very much for listening bye, -bye.